So let's talk the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. It's 30 days, I've been using this device for a while, and I have so many things to tell you about Samsung's latest smartphone. Let's jump in. So I can give you a list of specs, I can run through some of that, but I think I'll start with with just the natural idea of what it is to use a smartphone for 30 days. I think that makes the most amount of sense, right? So when you get the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, the first thing in time you look at it, it's especially the Aura Glow. Uh, the color is it's a little bit mesmerizing. At first I didn't like it, I thought too shiny, too shimmery, uh, you know, that light refraction on there where it changes color, it's annoying, but I like it now. I actually do like it and appreciate it. I really wanted to go for that red color. It looks really, really nice, but I think this works out very, very well. Design-wise, it is one of the best big smartphones to hold. 6.8 inches in size, it feels really comfortable, so you can use it in one hand. And speaking of design ergonomics, the power button location on the left hand is, I like it, it's nice. The first two days I had the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, I was like, okay, I need the power button on the right hand side. Now I'm so used to that when I switch other devices, I tap kind of like this with my right hand just to turn on you know, the device, which is just not the case. But they've done a good job with the positioning and it feels comfortable. But again, this is a device that even though it's big and if you have small hands, it's still easy to use and pop out that S Pen and start writing. I think design ergonomics are nice. It works really well for this device. Location of the speakers also are good. Um, so nothing really blocks the view of what you're using. The one thing I'll say is that front-facing camera, I wish it was actually in the corner now because I'll get to that in, in the second when I talk about gaming for, for that stuff. But when I mentioned the S Pen, when you take out that S Pen, it has so much more functionality this year. Now, you've heard from some YouTubers, they will call the new Air Actions a gimmick. They don't like it. I say they haven't actually thought in a broader scope. Not every function in a device is meant for you. And that's how I kind of see the Air Actions, but I've got, I've got to use them quite a bit because I've had family visiting and taking photos and pulling out that S Pen to actually change through and go through some of those you know camera taking options is great so i can switch my wide angle lens i can go into telephoto i can do whatever i want to but it fits the occasion i want to use it for now the cool thing about it is that it doesn't take away from the s pen it doesn't slow it down it doesn't do anything you don't have to use it but it's there and it's great, especially when you travel. If you're traveling by yourself and you wanna take those really cool photos, instead of you asking the stranger you don't know how to speak the language, you can set your phone up and just remote do it and you take the photos that you want to take. I like it. I wanna see some more functionality with the Air Actions, maybe in some games, maybe of course in more applications, but you can use it of course in multimedia as well. And also, if you're presenting, it's a great tool uh, because you've got Dex built in. We'll get to Dex and some of those features later. So this device um, has three cameras, right? Three cameras at the back. The ultra wide camera is my favorite. It works out so well. It's, it gives you such great field of view. Photography is sharp, it is crisp. I mean, the images, and just looking at some of the images, uh, my buddy Sam, and you guys, if you know Sam, uh, just took a trip out to Cuba. It looks so good. Just some of the wide shots look amazing. And just a regular shot you take of this camera, you're going, wow. This is really, really impressive. I like it. Now, nighttime shots are good. They're not crazy, but they're good. And I think they work out well. I wanna see improvement, Samsung. I mean, right now, you are now scaling behind. And hopefully we see that next year, or hopefully we get a few uh, software updates, because I think the sensor is good. We've seen Gcam and all that stuff on Galaxy devices, and there's a drastic improvement. So it's a software thing and not a hardware thing. But I know some of you are asking, will we get a professional camera review? We'll see, I don't know. My buddy just came back from vacation. There are so many more devices coming out. So we'll, we'll plan, see if we can do something next week for you guys. Now, this is powered by the Snapdragon 855 processor. You've got 12 gigs of RAM on there. I mean, 12 gigs, imagine that on a smartphone. Some people don't have 12 gigs on their PCs or laptops, right? Uh, but you've got UFS 3.0. So what that means overall is that everything runs smooth. Just taking those photos and storing your device and reading the photos are much quicker. It's faster. Um, gaming is a huge performance, right? Um, it, it just runs games really well. 
uh, you've got the 855, you've got that amount of RAM, uh, you've got to just feel and enjoy the performance and look, I'm not going to go too much in gaming, you can check out my gaming video. I did one full gaming video uh, just to showcase what it can do in gaming performance and this device rocks. Uh, it rocks really well. Again, the one game that doesn't really cool off well is PUBG, but we all know that, so we'll set that one aside. But speaking of gaming though, uh, you you can do more with this device. You know, you've got the ability to play Android games, right? You've got the ability to also stream games for your PC with uh, apps like Steam Link or Nvidia Shield uh, for Android. I use both of them and it just runs really well. It's nice to actually have that functionality built in. Um, and then also you've got the Galaxy Play Link, which I have the beta. It's not fully functional yet. I'm having some issues. So once that comes up, I'll give you guys a demo to look at. And also you can check out that G Lap controller. I know you guys are wondering. So you can see some of the gameplay functionality there. Now, if gaming is not your thing, you're going, okay, fine. I I, I like the S Pen, um, I like the functionality, but how is the battery life? How does the battery life work on this device? It is phenomenal, 4300 milliamp battery. Now packaged with a 25 watt charger, and if you haven't checked my charging videos for the 25 watt and the uh, optional 45 watt charger, go check those videos out. I have links for you guys here. Charging is impeccable. 25 watt charger gives me literally an hour, eight minutes, the uh, 45 watts is just 60 minutes, right? So it's really fast, it's effective, but the battery life on it is so impressive. I mean, uh, it, I almost felt like I was using the Huawei uh, you know, P30 Pro. P30 Pro, the Mate 20 Pro, I mean, battery life on the, on the Huawei devices are impressive. And this felt that way. I felt like, wow, Samsung, you really pushed the edge. Now, there's something I did notice, uh, and this was also brought to my attention by my buddy, Danny Wingett. So definitely check out his video uh, when he actually drops it. He talked about how like Samsung is really aggressive with the dimming on the display. The display is vibrant, but the dimming structure is a little bit off. And uh, that's a combat, of course, battery life. I'm fine with that. I want them to balance some of that out properly. So I get a, just a good idea of what it does. Now, you've got uh, Adobe Atmos, you've got, uh, you've got quad, uh, sorry, dual, sorry, I was gonna say quad speakers. You've got dual speakers on this device. Uh, it sounds really good. I like it. I think what people confuse with, you know, not being as loud or as bassy in some levels is the fact that it's also got this, technically a tweeter on the side. So which means if your fingers cover both speakers, you will still get reasonably good audio, which is better than most devices. So you've got that space on the very top of the device that actually is a sound output, if you will. Uh, and that goes a long way. Now, this device is really impressive. You know, the battery life is really good. Functionality is fine. I've really been enjoying this device all around. Like, it's nothing too crazy. Again, Samsung has come with something that's really well balanced overall that you know will hit a lot of points and i think a lot of people like that now there's certain things i wish they excelled at. i wish their night mode was really good i, I wish it compared to the huawei and the pixel because it does just doesn't right uh but there are things that they do that nobody can do uh well now we have devices and android i think android 10 could do it now where you could connect to a pc and have like a desktop mode but dex is there it does a fantastic job it is really nice um, and it's such a good thing. I mean, the ability to just plug it to uh, the, the monitor or display and, and you're good to go is crazy. Uh, now, you can do it via USB by just downloading the software once you're prompted to connect it to your computer. So if you go from a job site to job site, you've got stuff to do, but you just have a USB Type-C cable and you need to use, you can just plug it in and go. That's great. That's what I like. And that's the thing that they do really, really well. Now. Um, a lot of people have talked about it as a productivity device, right? And uh, to really give you a better idea of what that means, I wanted to invite my buddy, uh, Jonathan Casey, because, you know, one of the things we do as creators is we shoot video. And, you know, we try different formats of editing. A lot of people are editing on their iPads right now. Uh, my, uh, my videographer, Daniel Singh, does that, and he does that really well. That's not my space, but he's done some videos on it. I want you to just hear his thoughts on editing on the Galaxy uh, Note 10 Plus and just what it is. 
Hey, what's going on friends? It's Jonathan. I've been using the Galaxy Note 10 Plus ever since it was first announced. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed when it comes to the built-in video editor. I've actually edited a few videos on it and I can personally say it doesn't offer advanced features for seasoned content creators, but it offers enough to get you started, especially for social media and even for YouTube if you're trying to do like a montage or something for family or maybe like a cinematic sample video. You can trim a clip, you can remove a portion from a clip, you can add text effects, transitions, you can add built-in filters for coloring, and you can even add your own background music or choose one of the songs that Samsung provides for free, which they do offer a wide selection. It's like I said, it is missing some advanced features when you compare it to desktop video editing applications. However, when you combine this built-in video editor with the built-in camera on the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus, I feel like you have like an all-in-one content creation tool, plus it's a phone. Thanks for having me. So there you have it. There's so much to talk about with the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. There's, there's so many features. Uh, the device is, to me, is really solid. It, it, it just really, I can say the word really a couple of times here, right? I've probably said it, but it's a, it's a very good device. Uh, and I think a lot of people miss that aspect here. You've got 256 gigabytes of storage. It starts at 1099, which is, look, it's better than the iPhone starting uh, price. That's 64 gigabytes at 256. You can have got expandable memory via micro SD. So that's also great there. You've got link to PC from Microsoft. Now that's with every device, but this is also kind of baked into the Note 10. So you've got that feature of functionality uh, in there as well. Now I did mention something about the front facing camera and its position because when I when you game, you can actually screen record and capture your face. So you can, you know, do face capture and share that. I shared a video out there. It's great, except your thumb is always blocking the camera. That's not cool. Especially when you're gaming, it doesn't, doesn't do you any good. So hopefully we see something different next year, whether it's an under display uh, camera, whether it's the um, camera in the corner or pop-up, we don't, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. The fingerprint sensor is to me better than the Galaxy uh, S10 Plus. Uh, I've, got, I've gotten fewer, much fewer issues with it and I like it. Um, and the facial recognition works pretty fast and well. Uh, so that's it guys. Those are my thoughts on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I enjoy it, I like it. Um, you know, this, this is now my daily driver. And it's a device that I think a lot of people will truly appreciate. Uh, I think you have to think about it as a specialty device. It's a productivity, it has a specific function. And this might be the device for you. It's not for everyone. It doesn't have to be the killer device. You just have to know what you want the device for. And that's why we have different types of smartphones. So if you have any questions, any comments, guys, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment.